today they talk a lot about criminalizing hate speech. And, you know, from our perspective, that's not a good idea. There has to be actually some crime involved before it rises to the level of, of doing something in the criminal justice system about it. It's not just about a legal approach. It's also about the zeitgeist. And it doesn't have to turn into a physical crime. Um, it doesn't have to turn into a physical altercation or actual violence. But it's also about um, the culture and the times in which we're living in which it is socially acceptable to say uh, things that are specifically hatred toward Jews and for it to not be condemned by folks um, in a variety of settings. There was a, a neo-Nazi rally in North Georgia. The German consul general said to me, I just don't understand. I go, what do you mean you don't understand? She's like, well, how can they say these things and it not be illegal? And I was like, it's protected. And she said, but, but it's hateful. She said, in Germany, like, you, can't, you can't say anything like that. This is America. Free speech, um, First Amendment protections um, are there. You have a right to be a bigot. What is the role of some of these platforms in terms of when hate is promulgated on the social media sites and what responsibilities do they have and where does the law intersect with that? Internet outlets for preaching hatred, social media networks. Would the political climate in the United States be better if all speech wasn't protected? I don't think suppressing the expression would make things better. What's ever in the hearts and minds of people needs to be expressed and pushed back against to create a culture of more empathy and respect for others. The folks on the far end who are the detractors, the haters, I can't change their minds. However, what they produce and the content they create has the ability to go mainstream and be seductive to these folks in the middle who are don't knows, who are seeking community, who are very insecure, who don't have the content knowledge. We think often about the Jewish involvement in the civil rights movement and we say, oh, well, the Jews were involved in the civil rights movement. We marched with Dr. King. So, of course, the black community should know all of the issues that we face. Black and Hispanic communities tend to have less exposure to the conversations around Jews, Judaism and Israel and are more willing to um, align themselves with statements like Jews have more loyalty to Israel than the United States. One of the things that I've been doing in New York is bringing Hasidic rabbis into public schools to speak to kids. These kids, they interact all the time. You know, these are, these are kids of color who are walking on the street with Hasidic rabbis and others who just don't know who they are. They, you know, they have these black hats and these black gowns and they're intimidating for them. And these, and these two communities have not gotten to know each other. Calling a, a group of us white Jews, it minimizes our Jewishness and our ability to be identified as a minority. I do think it's about this blurring of the lines of political correctness and political language being used. I recognize that I myself am a Jew who benefits from white privilege, but I don't believe that myself is, is white, right? We as an Ashkenormative society have done a poor job until the last three years, let's say, about talking about really what is Jewish diversity. <laughs> when we talk to folks, they say, well, what's a Semite? And Usually I'm anti, so maybe an anti-Semite's not a bad thing. I mean, it's really that simplistic. Um, so that's why I would actually say that there really needs to be a shift in terminology here. And I'm, a, I, if one is a fan of such terminology, I would prefer the use of Jew hatred or hatred of Jews. We know what it looks like. We know what it feels like. I know what it was like to have a swastika on my driveway when my kid was in ninth grade at a private school here in Atlanta. My first experience was when I was nine years old playing football and I had this headgear that looked like payas and kids made fun of me for that. But I remember that from when I was nine. I find that no one talks about Iranians holding power, Koreans holding power, the Mexicans holding power, Russians holding power, right? It's not an issue. But when it comes to Jews holding power, it's a major issue. I know what it was for my mother to be forced out of Germany because the teacher said, Juden Raus, Jews get out. For the most part, the anti-Semitism that we track in this country today, I would not say is primarily motivated because of uh, animosity to Israel. Um, there's, there's other things going on. And I cannot identify for you one pattern of what's causing the spike in the anti-Semitic incidents. Some were um, kids who didn't really understand the meaning of swastikas. Some were 
mentally disturbed people who didn't really have capacity to know what they were doing. Some were gentrifying issues. Tribalism is seen as a negative. Particularism is seen as a negative, except for every other group where it's cool and acceptable to advocate on behalf of your uh, particular identity, whether it's about race, whether it's about sexuality, gender, whatever it is, not for the Jews. Crime is going down in New York City. The number of uh, hate crimes were going up, particularly the ones motivated by anti-Semitism. When I looked at the the data, over 50% of those incidents were swastika incidents. I actually can't name for you a single incident that could be identified as an anti-Zionist incident. Is anti-Zionism something that is overbloated or overstated? What does one mean when they say they're an anti-Zionist? Are they only against a Jewish self-determination? Are they against all forms of nationalism, which is very rare to find, but one can find them? And usually we find that there is a double standard. I believe that there are you know, 51 flavors of Zionism. But if American Jewry or diaspora Jewry is unable to articulate what Zionism means to them, who cares if it's called anti-Zionism? It's not going to make a difference. We are constantly finding ourselves in really tiny crevices of gray areas. Number eight, boycott or harassment of Israeli citizens abroad. Is that anti-Semitism? Or is that anti-Zionism? Whether it's anti-Semitism or anti-Zionism, we have to remember that on the one hand, nuance is important for us, but we also, we don't have to b- debate everything. We just have to be strong in our in our understanding of, of why we believe what we believe. We almost over-empathize when it comes to anti-Semitism or anti-Zionism because we want to ha- think the best of people.